You may have recognized that clip from Tom Hanks in the movie The Terminal. Quite a good movie. If you never saw it, go ahead and watch it. Well, that's playing out in real life. In Guayaquil, there's a Lebanese man that's been stuck in the terminal for 42 days. Uh, he has no passport. And while they're trying to work that out, he's living the role of Tom Hanks. My glasses, you're wondering, what's going on? I broke them. Maybe tomorrow. Thank you for the concern. The mayor, this week, insists that the Tranvia will be done on time in October. On time meaning a couple years late, but the latest on time. The reason this came up was the Tranvia's work on this latest contract to complete it is about 40% done. However, about 60% of the contract time has elapsed. The group doing the work said that the problem, the delay, is caused by the availability of materials to complete the work, but they swear that they will make up the time. <sighs> Korea was accused, Korea was accused of kidnapping an opponent. Now this kidnapping played out in Bogota, Colombia. There was a question of whether there was enough evidence to actually bring this to trial, being a former president and all, should they do this? Well, the National Assembly this week has allowed the prosecution of Korea in this kidnapping. And as I looked into this, read a little bit more information, and you don't know what you're not getting for information, but from what I read, it looks pretty plausible. Six billion dollars in new investments announced. Now, the interesting thing about this is all the loans in the past half a dozen years have been from the Chinese. And there's been concern about doing that anymore because of the demands that they put on it. For example, all the oil they're producing, basically almost all of that has to go to China. The mining that was taking place here in the Cajas, which is the water source for Cuenca, uh, was by the Chinese and that has been stopped. It's on hold for now. And when the Amazonian indigenous were uh, being driven at gunpoint from their lands, contrary to the Constitution, that was the Chinese that were going to roll in and uh, look for some oil. That also has been stopped. So a lot of strings attached to those loans. Well, now what they have is a $6 billion investment into Ecuador. And the interesting thing is it's with the United States. They've negotiated this deal with the United States. And that's quite a dramatic change from the past where United States by the government was considered to be the enemy. Uh, by the people, uh, there's, there's a close affinity with the United States, particularly since so many relatives live there. This is just one more step in this process of improving relationships, improving trade agreements. And I, for one, think it's a great thing. The economy here needs it. And there's no reason not to have good relations. So uh, I applaud it. I've mentioned a few times about the IESS system being on the verge of bankruptcy. And the IESS system is the equivalent of the Social Security system with the medical tied into it. And the reason being is there was a double set of books and it was just going through so much money. Um, a lot of that money was a direct result 
of political paybacks. And this was all coming out of that system. What you have now is there was an investigation into this, the double books. And the former IESS chief is now under investigation. And there's a citizens council that has been ordered to proceed with this investigation. There's probably a number of billions of dollars that's vanished from the system. Now, recently, that $4 billion debt incurred just this year has been wiped clean, taken from another area in the government. So the government still has that debt. But to keep the IESS system afloat, it's essentially an internal loan. And the news on the border with the uh, drug cartel, Gaucho, who is the number one target on the Colombian-Ecuador border, uh, the one that was in charge of the bombings that took place, they have captured his brother. Now, both of these were a member of the FARC, the socialist revolutionary uh, criminal cartel in Colombia that wreaked havoc for so many years. And in uh, 16 or 17, there was a peace agreement signed. And this gaucho and his brother, uh, they refused to be part of that. And so they just continue business as usual, which involves uh, drugs and kidnapping and extortion. Fortunately for Colombia, this is all taking place in a basically almost unpopulated area. But it's right on the border of Ecuador. And in Ecuador, there are some towns that's populated. And so naturally it spills over. They want to go and hit the restaurants and the bars. Plus they do a lot of their drug business in and through Ecuador. And so there has been an ongoing battle with the uh, intelligence from the United States provided, Colombian providing their military, Ecuador, their police and military. And the, basically they're just hunting these people down. It's almost reminiscent of the hunt for Saddam Hussein and doing a pretty good job. And the last thing for today is the attack of the bees. Now it's funny, we just had that holiday where I had a video showing all the sweets and you couldn't see it in the video because they were so small, but there were billions of bees around these sweets. Well, in Manta at this soccer game, nobody knows how many, but it was a huge swarm the size of the field, which again, don't show up on the video, but the players all dove for the ground. And you see the players all across the field, that's how big that swarm was. This is not the first time this has happened in Ecuador. And this week is the Russian Cup. I could care less about soccer, football, don't care anything about it. I'm an American football kind of guy. But it's kind of madness. It's uh, everybody's watching everywhere you go. There's TV sets tuned in. There's endless parties going on. So if you're into that and you're here in Cuenca, go ahead and enjoy it. Have fun. Have a beer for me. I will see you next time.